Church has always been a vital part of every believer's life. Hello, I'm Pastor Gray, pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Longview, Texas. Thank you for taking the time to tune in for this service. I'm standing in our auditorium, and here in just a moment, I'm going to take you into this auditorium as we are conducting the services here at 2200 West Loop 281. My heart's desire is that as the Word of God is preached, that God would do something during this service. Again, thank you for being with us. Enjoy the services. I'll be back at the end. God bless you. Let's get right into the preaching of God's Word. First Peter is where we're going. I've been enjoying studying the Hebrews, James, Peter, and I now have extended it into Second Peter. But, but I'm going to give you a couple of nuggets if I could. One particular I should say. In First Peter chapter 2, and verse number 20, and uh, did you say right now, Brother Harris, means 15 minutes? Is that right? In Belize, when you say right now, does it mean right now? Okay, I'll be done in four right nows from right now. And uh, so, First Peter chapter 2, for what glory is it, verse number 20, for what glory is it, if when you be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently, but if when you do well and suffer for it, Ye take it patiently. This is acceptable with God. For even here unto were ye called. Now think about this. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow in follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Now these are his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bare our sins, and in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your soul. Let's pray, and I'm going to preach tonight on this subject, how to respond to mocking. How to respond to mocking. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, I have been very impacted by the scripture over the past couple of weeks. And, and, and Lord, I've, I, I, I want to be spoken to tonight. I want your spirit to do a work in me. And as I lay my eyes on the text, I cannot believe all that you did for us when you died on the cross, an innocent man dying for the ungodly. And Lord, I, I pray that tonight we would not take our salvation lightly. As we heard testimony today and then Brother Plan as he's saying and, and the choir and the, even the offertory and Brother, Brother Sammy, the haven of rest, it all centers around what you've done for us, not what we've done for you, but what you've done for us. And help us to put our life in context of the word in your life. And Lord, you left us, as the book just said, you left us an example that we should walk in your steps. And Lord, help us to do that on this night. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to make a statement at the very beginning. To the degree that you decide to live a holy life is to the degree that you will be mocked by this world. If you have not been mocked by this world, and you have not been glared at by this world, then I would propose to you that you are not living that kind of holy life. The Bible's very clear in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. For what glory is it when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable to God. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I would tell you this, that the Bible says when ye do well, when ye do good, when ye do, when you do what is morally correct. All those are lifted, listed under the definition of well. There is a price that comes when you and I decide to take our rightful place in a wrongful world. Did you hear that? There is a price that will be paid when we take our rightful identity in a world that's all about the flesh. The entire premise of Peter, 
The entire premise of 1 Peter is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. If you'll go there, please. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 1. This is the whole premise of the book of 1 Peter, and here it is. You ready? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the what, please? Strangers. Can you say that out loud? To the what? Strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Paul was speaking to the believers who now have been scattered. You go back to the book of Acts, you're going to find out that persecution hits the church, and now they are scattered. Peter the apostle, which was Peter the apostle to the tribes of Israel, Paul was the apostle to the Gentile, and although Paul was called to the Gentiles, had a desire to go to the tribes of Israel, Peter was called exclusively to the tribes of Israel, then he had to be forced to open it up to Cornelius. Regardless if you're a Paul or you're a Peter, guess what? You and I are still believers. We are, you're a Jew, a Gentile, doesn't matter. If you have trusted Jesus Christ right now, you are a believer. And you and I are in the same position that these people were back there. We have been scattered and therefore we are strangers. I don't have time to go into the cultural study of Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, and uh, Asia, and Bithynia. But just suffice it to say that the entire known world at that time was not a very pleasant place to live for people that were trying to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. You in 2023 do not have it any worse than they had it back here after the Lord had risen and gone home to the right hand of the Father. Paul, Peter is telling them that they were strangers to the culture of the countries they were living in. And when he sent this letter out, he said, listen to me, you are strangers. And you are to view yourself as though you may be strangers in the world. Look at verse 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through, what please? Sanctification of the Spirit unto what? Obedience. What he was telling them was this. Listen to me. You may be strangers among the world you're living in, but you are part of his elect. And can I just tell you this? Calvinism is not a Bible doctrine. Did you hear that? God is not so bigoted that he chose some people to go to heaven and chose some people to go to hell. Election is when you as a sinner elected him as a savior to be your redeemer. But he was telling them, among the world, guess what identity you wear? You are a stranger. In fact, go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. He echoes this theme. And look at 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as, what please, strangers and pilgrims. He is telling us, That your identity as a saved person, the day you got saved, the day, the moment after you became a child of God, that moment. Anthony, I want to tell you tonight, brother, first of all, thank you for being back in church tonight. That same burden that you have been lifted. Anthony, can I tell you, when you got saved down here, you walked out with a new identity. You now have become a pilgrim and a stranger. This is you. You are not to assimilate and you are not to merge into the culture of this world. You are to be a stranger and you are to be a pilgrim. The reason most Christians never experience mocking, you never suffer. The times I never suffer is when I hide who I am and I hope that I can get through. But this is not God's plan. God's plan is this. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are His. And tonight, church, I'm going to ask you, 
to get your identity settled, not in your last name, not in your culture, not where you come from, but get it settled. You are a child of God and start walking through this world as a stranger and as a pilgrim. Do you know that the word stranger and pilgrim is how the Lord was when he came to this earth? He did not come to this earth to fit in. He came to this earth to redeem. And he was a very strange individual. He was something different about him. And this is how the Lord wants us to act. Most Christians never experience mocking because they don't carry themselves as strangers and pilgrims. You see, I am not staying here. I am a stranger. I am a foreigner. I live in a place with no rights of citizenship. We have confused the narrative. And the reason that people do not understand it, come here, Josiah, Corey, come here, if you don't mind. I mean, uh, Noah, come here. I didn't mean to do that to you. Stand on that chair and don't crush the flowers. Here, let me take this. Stand on that chair. Corey, go stand on that chair. Put one on the far end. I'm headed to heaven. I, this is where my citizenship is at. My citizenship is no longer on this earth. I may have been born in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I may have been born in that hospital. I may, may have been born next to my mother. Oh, that was funny, people. I may have. And I may have had my ties, but the day that I got saved was the day I no longer had my citizenship here. My citizenship is here, and on my way to here, I am to remind this world more of where I'm going, not where I live. But it is sad that we live in a day and time to where the average believer is a silent disciple. They are a secret Christian. They are undercover. They are behind enemy lines. Built, they are double agent. Listen, it's about time. You, I cannot believe the song that the young people sang, sang tonight. Reclaim the name. And I'm telling you, it's about time. I almost came out of my seat because it's about time that children of God stood up and stopped being scared and stopped apologizing for who you are. You're saved. You're a child of God. You are to be a stranger and you are to be a pilgrim. My citizenship is not here. My citizenship is here. And when it says a stranger, that means I'm living in a place without rights of citizenship. I am a pilgrim. I am a resident foreigner. I am living among somebody else's culture. And because I'm living among somebody else's culture, then I will suffer mocking. If you would, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 12. Would you look at what it says here? Yea. And all that will live, what please? Godly. Did you see that? 2 Timothy 3, 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I'm going to ask you a very pointed question. When is the last time you were mocked by anybody because you are a believer? And you and I, you cannot tell me that there are not opportunities around this area and around this world for you to say, this isn't how I roll, this isn't what I do, I don't behave this way. Brother Joe, I hope you don't mind me using our meeting that we had the other day, and and Jen, you would have been proud of your husband. We're sitting there at at a, a local establishment, and we're talking about the things of God and And all of a sudden, Joe takes his chair, and you know, he's not short, one, 
two, he's not quiet in anything that he does. And, and all of a sudden, we were inundated by just this, this, and I could feel it. And then he saw it out of the corner of his eyes, and he took his chair, and, and we were facing each other, and, and we, were, we're, we were kind of facing each other, and he took his chair, and he turned it completely around. And the looks he got, who do you think you are? When is the last time that you declared who you are in this world and you suffered for it? We want no suffering. We want a participation trophy. We want to fit in. We want to, hey, dude, hey, essay, hey, homeboy. We want to assimilate. Rather than be proud of who we are, we are children of the king, we are pilgrims, we are strangers, we are not come from this world, we are headed to that world. The heavenly Savior paid for a price on the cross. Now here's the difference with, to, with tonight. What happens when we adopt this? Well, the Lord said this, if you'll go back to First Peter, because I'm not going to be long, but here's what I truly believe. That he left us an example. Would you look at verse 21? And this is where my, 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 my personal growth kind of went to a level because I, I was inundated by this thought. He left us, leaving us an, what please? Example. That ye should, what? Follow in his steps. The first thing I want to tell you is this. The moment that you become a pilgrim and you become a stranger is the moment at some point you're going to suffer and you're going to be mocked. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do you know Daniel, even among his own people that were carried captive, do you know what it says about Daniel? It says that even the sort that was carried away, that Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, when they decided not to eat the king's meat, even among the people that came out to Babylon, you know what it said? You're going to stand out among your own people. You are not standing out to stand out. And this is the premise for tonight. I am not a stranger and I am not a pilgrim for the sake of being odd. Can we settle that tonight? Would you get this lesson from 1 Peter? It's not for the purpose of being odd. I am not doing what I'm doing to be a freak show to the world. I'm just trying to honor the Lord. Did you hear that? I'm just trying to honor the Lord. I'm just trying to keep my eyes from seeing things I shouldn't see. I'm just trying from, to keep from sitting at the gates of Sodom and Gomorrah, 1 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3. I don't want to be vexed in seeing and in hearing the things of this world. I want to honor my Lord. I can't say that enough. I want to honor my Lord. I'm not a stranger because I want to be odd. I'm not a pilgrim because I want to be offensive. I just want to honor my Lord. And we have lost a generation of Christians that they no longer look through the eyes of, I just want to honor my Lord. There are right now believers that are struggling with their sanctification, and I'm encouraging them, and I'm telling them, you honor the Lord. You don't have to know what's coming in the next turn. You just know whatever you face, honor the the Lord, but at the end, it's not to be weird. There are people running from the fundamentals of the word, and they're ditching church. Want to know why? They do not know the reason why they're to be a stranger and a pilgrim. There's a reason why. And here, he left us the example. And all of a sudden, when I was studying this, I thought to myself, that's it. That's it. Would you look at 1 Peter 2, 22? And I'm going to give you three things and then we're done. You being mocked by the world at first reaction. Ladies, can I, can I tell you my hat's off to you? 
any lady who decides to be 100% female 100% of the time, you're going to catch it. Can I say that again? Any female that decides to be 100% female 100% of the time in a transgender uh, 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 culture, you're going to catch it. Guys, it's easier for you to live for the Lord Jesus Christ in your standards than it is for a true lady to live that. And that one's not up for debate. That's right there in the book. But I will tell you, the end, ladies, of you looking like a lady is not to stand out and be weird. It is for you to be like Christ, but you're not going to be like Christ and not be mocked. You just take the political climate that we're in. Anybody who believes that word right there is against abortion. Did y'all hear that? Anybody who believes that word right there is against homosexuality, it's against sodomite. Anybody. And the moment you espouse what they call Judeo Judeo religion and beliefs, you all of a sudden are going to be ridiculed. But the end is not to be weird. This is amazing to me because the end is at the end of the sermon. So, number one, all right, you ready? Look at 1 Peter 2 22. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. If you tonight say, Pastor, I'm, I'm going to start being a better pilgrim and a better stranger. So now how do I act? You follow in the steps of our Savior. And do you know what was in the steps of our Savior? Look at it. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Go to Isaiah 53, 9, because this is in direct quotation from Isaiah 53, 9. I want you to look at it. When this was being translated from the Greek into the English, and then you have it being quoted back from the Hebrew, and now the Hebrew comes up to the English, and the Greek comes up. But I want you to notice the wording back in Isaiah 53, 9. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no, what please, violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Do you know the only way you being weird is effective? The only way that you can wear this is you must wear this with the example of Christ. You can't wear this with the traditions of men. You have to wear this following the example of Christ. So every time I put on my weird, every time I put on my pilgrim hat, every time I put on my stranger, every time I walk out and this is my identity, then I am to wear this and follow in his steps. When you follow in his steps, the very first thing you have to put on when you start wearing this identity is this, no guile in your spirit. It is not fair to a loving Jesus Christ who came and died on the cross for you to be a stranger and be a pilgrim and be a jerk about it. I'm going to talk to all the other church members, not this church, because we're not jerks. But it's okay to believe something. But look what he said, 1 Peter 2, 22, look at it, we're following in his steps. If he was suffered and he was mocked and Peter was telling them you're scattered, but you're a stranger and you're a pilgrim. And you are going to be mocked. You are going to be made fun of. You are going to be somebody that your beliefs and your standards and how you behave and what you think is right and what you think is wrong. People are going to look at you and they're going to go, what? Who lives that way? So then how do you do this? You do this with no guile. You must keep your spirit clean so that the moment of mocking you are not responding from any angst in here this won't work this is those fundamentalist this is those westboro this are those crazies that just want to be weird but do not carry the spirit of christ 
I'm telling you that the biggest impact we can have on this world is for us to stand up and say, I'm born again, I am saved, I am a pilgrim, I am a stranger, but I carry the spirit of Jesus Christ. And I am not going to operate with guile. Miss Elizabeth sits down here and Miss Elizabeth, about a year and a half ago, decided she would start becoming a pilgrim and a stranger. And is it not true, the very first thing that Christ started working on you was your spirit. And all of a sudden, there is this change. Now, when we say change, is it not amazing that we look here? There are a lot of good-looking believers that have a bad attitude. How many would agree with that? They're, 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 what you see is not what you get. My, my famous what you see is not what you get is one day I was sitting in the airport getting ready to fly out years ago and, and I was sitting next to some ladies and, and they were old at that time. They were in their 50s and in their mid-50s and, and early 60s and, and here come this, this, this steward, uh, this flight attendant coming down and he was about six foot one, two, chiseled and blonde head, square jaw and and all the ladies were like, oh, is that, is that our flight attendant? And oh, they were just like putting powder on or whatever. And they were, and, and I'm looking at these old women. I'm in my mid-20s, late-20s. I'm looking at these old women going, oh, my soul. Y'all are old like you, never mind, I better stop. Y'all are old like your kneecaps are down to your ankles. Y'all are old. And they, and they, <laughs> I cannot believe I said that. And, and so, and so they're all like, he gets on our flight, he checks in, and, and they're like, oh, he's on our flight, he's on our flight. And so, so, so he doesn't say a word. Like he is stoic, and, and, and he's got blonde hair, chiseled features, and, and, and you know, he just looks at the lady and, and he, and ladies and he does that. They're like, oh, they're swooning, and they get to their seat, and they buckle up, and then they're, they're like looking, and, they're, and they're, they're looking at him. And then only God can work this one out. He picks up that phone and he goes, welcome to flight 3303. <laughs> and every one of those ladies went, oh, they just got back. <laughs> and I was like, yes, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that was a good day on this flight, amen. But you know there's a lot of people who look good and they look the part, but when you see them, their spirit is no more like Christ. I am so like happy to see other believers. That if you ever made the mistake, you and I hop when you go in there and there's another church group comes in. And you get up and you say, they look just like us. This is awesome. There's another church in town that they're believers. And I can't tell you how many times my wife goes, don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to don't do it. And I'll get up and I'll go over there and, and I'll say, hey, y'all. Hey, what church are y'all from? And they'll look at me and go, Church of the Latter-day Saints. <laughs> I did that one time and we're Jehovah Witnesses. And I, um, he said, you can't say it, can you? Because you Baptists can't bless us, can you? And I Have a good day. We're not standing out, and we are not being an impact in the world around us because our spirit's wrong. Can I, can I talk to you men real quick? I love it when you men say to me, my boss loves me. My boss loves me loves me and I asked a man the other day and I said well how does he look at your Christianity he goes oh he loves me in fact pastor he loves me so much he doesn't even invite me to the Christmas party that they serve beer but he loves me you want to know how that happens because some <laughs> the church staff right now is laughing at each other and and uh, I don't like you people and uh, no can I tell you because we have the wrong definition of what this means, here's what we do. 
and we honestly think, I'm, I don't want to get into fights. You don't have to get into fights. Christ left us an example. Be proud you're saved. Be proud you're going to heaven. Be proud of it all and have no guile in your spirit. I want to make an impact in East Texas. I want to see God do something. And this morning, if this wasn't an indication of God doing something this morning, listen to me, but I'm going to tell you why. Because when you and I are unashamed that we're going to heaven, I'm a stranger, I'm a pilgrim, I don't fit in anywhere down here. But that doesn't mean that I have a fat, there's no guile. There's no guile. It's like people, when they cuss at you, it's like, now I, I, I've heard a lot of words, but I don't think I know. What, what, like, how do you spell that word? I have had people, blankety, blank, 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 blank. Oh, stop, stop. That third word down. Now, those first two I've heard my mother-in-law use, but that third one down. <laughs> could you tell me what that third one, and, and, and how do you spell it? And one day I did this to a guy, and I said, and how do you spell that word? And I wrote it on the back of a piece of paper, and, and I said, what does that mean? And he told me what it meant, and I was like, like they got a word that means that? But you know what we walk around? We walk around with not Christ's spirit. And can I quote a verse? We have the form of godliness, but we are denying the power thereof do not abandon your standards do not abandon your heritage do not abandon everything you have going on and don't take the small percent of crazies in our movement that they got a stinking rotten attitude and they're tyrannical and they're dictatorial and do not think that's all of us because that's not me I have retained my heritage, I have retained my belief system, and I've retained who I am. I am a stranger. I am a pilgrim. I'm not fitting in down here, but I'm going to carry the spirit of Christ, and there is no, cannot be any guile. Do you, do you know what's really crazy about this whole thing? Is that, isn't it amazing that when you meet a member and you're like, man, is everybody at the church like that? Either way, if you got a rotten attitude, don't tell them you go to church here. Tell them you go to somebody other's church. But if you're willing to say, no, 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 I, I'm a stranger and I'm a pilgrim and there is no guile in here. I, I wrote this down and I, and I thought this was a, for me. When I am mocked, and my reaction is to fight, then I am not carrying the Spirit of Christ. When I am mocked and I am grasping what to say, when somebody calls in to question my belief system, when somebody calls into question my behavior, and all I'm trying to do is serve the Lord, if I sit there and and I struggled for a long time. That verse that says, be ready to give an answer of the hope that's within you. But when you're in the middle of being mocked and you're in the middle of being made fun of, and all of a sudden you're like, I don't, even, I don't get this because I don't even have anything to come back at. I wish I could be sarcastic. No, I wish. I, some of these, some, not y'all. Some of these people... I admire their ability to nail you to the wall. You're not even done. And like, man, how did you do that? Is there a school you go to to get that done? You know what it is? Guile. And then I came across some wonderful verse. Go to Matthew 26, verse 62. We are not weird just for the sake of weird. Please know this. When you dawn that I'm a pilgrim and I am a stranger, take the pressure off of yourself and live with no guile. I'm okay with my haircut. I am okay with my belief standards. I am okay with what I do and I don't do. And here's why. Because I'm not doing it to prove a point. Listen to this. I'm doing it to uplift a person. Because Christ made a difference in me. And I am supposed to be sanctified. 
Look at Matthew 26, verse 62. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou? Matthew 26, 62. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Jesus, Answerest thou? What's that next word? What is it which these witness against thee? Look at verse 63. But Jesus, what? Held his war. No. Jesus held his what? Peace. Jesus was all about peace. He came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He did not bite his... You better be glad I'm holding it in. And I'm going to walk away. That wasn't Jesus. Would you please listen? That wasn't Jesus. He held his peace. He was so secure in that he was the son of God that he did not feel the need to fight. And he allowed the mockery. Do not listen to this Christian right-wing attitude that says, go burn something down, go, go, go demonstrate, go blow something up. You listen to me. He did not come to set up his own kingdom, and what we need is we need people that are saved, that are like, I am a pilgrim, and I am a stranger, and I am going to wear this proudly, but I am not going to carry in my spirit any guile. And if there's any anger and bitterness in your spirit, then this will not go well for you. But the biggest impact we can have is when we don the spirit of Christ and we're okay with being strangers and pilgrims. The second thing that I must tell you is how do we get that done? How do we get that done? Look at 1 Peter 2.23. And it's all outlined right here in this text expositionally. Look what it says. Who, when he was what? Reviled. Reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Would you look at this last phrase? But committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Now I'm about done. To him that judgeth what? Peter said this, I was with him. I was with him. No other apostle wrote this one. He said, let me tell you something about the Savior. When they reviled and they mocked him, do you remember that it says Peter followed afar off? When they were mocking and reviling him, you know what he was saying? I saw him do something with his spirit. What did he do? Go to Luke 23, 46. Peter is the apostle that's writing this. Paul's not writing this. Because Paul was an apostle that was last seen of Jesus Christ. Peter was there during the earthly ministry. Look, look what Peter was referencing. Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my what? Spirit. Do you know what he said? Father, I'm going to give you my spirit. There are is an amazing thing that you and I can be pilgrims and strangers and boy I hope I'm making sense as you walk through this world stop walking through this world with a chip on your shoulder walk through this world with the Spirit of Christ get into this thing with the Spirit of Christ live life don't be ashamed that I'm a citizen of heaven I'm born again and I'm just trying to honor the Lord with everything that I am and when you're made fun of don't fight back revile not again but you are going to have to get all the anger out of your spirit and then you're just gonna have to say Lord I'm commending my spirit and Peter was telling the people here he said listen to me I saw him not revile again. The average fight does not come over what you believe. The average fight comes over what your spirit is. It's our spirit. And when somebody challenges your belief, if there is no guile, the answer is simple. I'm just trying to honor the Lord. If your spirit's any other thing than that, oh my goodness, I didn't even see the time, but it's okay. If your spirit's anything other than that, 
Then it's, well, my church says I have to do this, and my mom says I have to do this, and my dad says it. Our traditions say we have. No, 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 no. I do what I do because I love the Lord. And I'm not living in spite. I'm not living in anger. I'm not living in victimization. I'm living as a victor because he saved me, and gladly I become a pilgrim, and gladly I become a stranger, and I'm going to put a smile on my face. No guile. No guile. And I'm going to give him my spirit because I need his to come out. And then the last thing I want to give you is this. And this is the end I want to get to. Look at 1 Peter 2.24. And again, exegeting the scriptures here, you come all the way down. And Peter is saying, the end of us being strangers and pilgrims. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but now are returned unto the what, please? Shepherd and bishop. Never forget what I'm about to tell you. Nobody can live for the flesh after the flesh. And be happy. You've got something special. It's, it's like when you hear somebody from England talking that Mary Poppins accent. And you're like, can you say that again? And they start talking that way. You're like, can you say that again? Alyssa was always good at that. It's like, can you say that again? Then dumb teenagers, they would walk up and they would order in this British accent. And, and one time it backfired on because somebody else answered in a British accent and said, oh, you've been there. <laughs> and it's like, oh, now you've got to follow it all the way through. Do you know that, that us living as pilgrims and strangers is not for us to prove a point, but it's for us to show a person that made a difference in our life? Because look what it says here. Peter said... He bare our sins in his own body so we could live under righteousness. He is now the shepherd and the bishop of our soul. The reason that I want to live this way, and the reason I want to live this way with his spirit, the reason I want to live this way with no guile, I'm not going to fight you on what I believe. I'm going to enjoy who I am is because I want other people to know what a wonderful thing it is to be saved. I want other people to know there is no greater way to raise your children than in pilgrim and stranger status. There is no better way. Did we not enjoy the young people getting up there and singing? Now how can we enjoy that? Because young people, you've decided I'm a pilgrim and a stranger and I'm okay. I thought Josh was going to ball up here because when he got to that phrase, we must reclaim the name, here stood this teenage kid knowing, knowing that we've got to get his name back and we've got to lift his name up. Why? He's too good to have a bishop and to have a shepherd, to have somebody that loves you from the inside out, to have somebody who believes in you, and to have somebody. Let me tell you something. I gladly will become a pilgrim and a stranger in this earth because I have something bigger than just the weird. I have a person named Jesus Christ because I'm going to heaven and I just want everybody else to know he made a difference in my life. And he can make a difference in yours. Most people who mock just don't understand. I'll end with this story. Miss Kelly's watching and she'll, thank you guys, have a seat. She will attest to this. The, the game changed for Miss Kelly with RG. <clears throat> I talked a little bit about it this morning. And forgive me for using what God's done in my life. It's the only life I have. But I saw a transformation happen in my wife's life one day. R.G. was probably about five or six, and at this time, we had to carry him. We, we had to, uh, he was going through some extensive surgery. His chest protrudes right now, but it was even worse. His, his features at, at, at about this, 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 this time was just, it was, it was like we couldn't take him anywhere. And one day, 
a, 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 a group of kids, little kids, little kids. And they were probably about, I should say about RG's age. And, and they turned around and they said this, look at the monkey. And they started going, ooh, 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 look at the monkey. It started in my toes. And it worked its way up to my knees. And I was going to hunt their parents down because I was going to whoop their parents and go find their grandparents, whoop the grandparents. I'm going to go back and whoop the school teachers. I'm going to whoop the past. I'm going to whoop everybody involved. And the transformation I saw in my wife was this. Bob, they just don't understand. Doesn't that remind you of what the Father, what Jesus said on the cross? Father, forgive them. Help me. For they know not what they do. Be a pilgrim. Be a stranger. The day you got saved is the day you put this on. Don't take this off. And where people are trying to change this, what they really should have changed is this. This and this is where every believer should live. This and I just want to honor the Lord. No, you think you're better. No, I just want to honor the Lord. Well, you, I just want to honor the Lord. Can I ask you tonight, are you being a pilgrim and a stranger? And do you think that's the end? That's not the end. The end is this. There are people out there that need Christ. And we have a bishop. We have a shepherd of our soul. That is Jesus Christ. And to the degree that Jesus was a stranger and a pilgrim in this world, you are to be a stranger and a pilgrim. And if any time along the way you are mocked and you are made fun of because you just want to honor the Lord, then have no guile. Don't fight back. Keep your spirit the same as God's spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For he did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Tonight I have one goal in mind, and that was this. Let's stop being ashamed that we're born again believers. Not change this. Let's change this. Our spiritual renewal is coming up. And we were staying around after one of the night sessions, and we were, they were shooting questions, and we were just kind of questioning. Y'all remember that? Just, just questions, right? One of the questions that was asked, in all these years, what have you changed? And I think they were expecting me to talk about standards, and I think they were expecting me to talk about my mode. And I said this, the thing I've had to change in all these years is my attitude, my spirit. And if your spirit right now is not Christ, then you're making Christ look bad. Don't change your pilgrim and stranger. Let's get our spirit right. Thank you for taking the time to view our services. I trust that the sermon, the message, the truth was a blessing to you. My number's at the bottom of the screen. If I can do anything for you or Emmanuel Baptist could be a blessing to you or yours, please reach out to me, let me know. I also would like to know what God has done in your heart. I would love to rejoice with you. I would love to pray with you. I would love to add your prayer request to our Wednesday night prayer bulletin. So if you want to, number's at the bottom of the screen. Text me, let me know. God bless you, and I trust that the Lord will bless your day. Join us again for another broadcast here at Emmanuel Baptist Church.